While we were having the time of our lives, we actually had a very real problem on our hands. We wake up at 5 a.m. in Coffs Harbor and our battery was completely flat. It's 5 a.m. We are in Coffs Harbor. We didn't have any power inside our van whatsoever. <laughs> Um, but we didn't have time to look into the problem because we have a diving boat to catch. <laughs> yes, we did. But luckily enough, while the diving boat was stocking up on gear before our dive, I managed to jump start the battery so the solar panels could at least bring the battery back to life a little while we we're out in the ocean diving. We got back from our dive and at least the battery had some voltage, but it wasn't enough to keep us going. So the problem that we were having was that we couldn't charge our battery enough to meet our power consumption demands. The Starlink was constantly draining us along with the fridge, mm -hmm. the fans and charging multiple devices at the same time. After we got off the dive boat, we were back to reality with a very real problem. But our prayers were answered when we found that iTech World was having a big sale at the same time. Yeah, that saved us. <laughs> it really did. So we ended up ordering a new 200 amp hour lithium battery. We ordered a battery monitor to go with it so we could actually see how our battery was doing. And then we ordered a 40 amp hour DC DC charger upgrading from our 20 amp hour charger. And then we bought a 300 watt solar blanket as well. To top things off, our order got delayed coming out of Western Australia from a train derailment. So we have to sit on our hands for the next two weeks and limp our power system through until our order arrived in Sydney with some friends of ours. Um, once our gear arrived, we got to work installing yeah, our <laughs> new parts. So what we ended up doing to fix the problem was this is the 40 amp DC DC charger that we ordered. So we had to fit that, that's where the old one used to be. On this one here, you've got solar priority where we can click over and just use our solar. This is part of the battery monitor that I installed. So this is really good because you can see the percentage of how much battery we've got left. You can see how much voltage we have and then we can also use this to monitor our consumption. So right now we are losing 4 amps an hour. And so now just for a good demo, I've just turned the Starlink on. So now we can see that our consumption is pretty much doubled. We've gone up to 9.5 amps, down to 5. So it fluctuates a lot but you can generally see there with the Starlink just how much power that we're using. So to upgrade and to cater for the 40 amp charger, I had to upgrade the cables that we had running to our charger and battery system. So we had like eight mil running before, so I've had to double that up. So we've got about 16 mil now, and I've installed a fuse down below to protect our everything we've got. So the bigger cables that we saw before ran to the DC DC charger. So the existing cables that we had are these ones here. So what I did, I pulled them out and I reused them to run over to our battery here with the existing that was already there. So we had two sets now to give us bigger amperage. This up here is the part of the battery monitor system. It's also a shunt as well. So if we get low voltage, it'll drop out. So basically with our battery monitor here, all our negatives are coming onto here and then the last one goes straight to the terminal. So everything coming in and out of the battery we're capturing here and it's showing up on our display. So when we're charging and discharging, it's figuring all that and it's telling us like how much we're going up in charge or down in charge. It's actually been very helpful. It's, it's definitely a must. If you're gonna start your own build, there's one thing that we definitely recommend. Well, as we have been on the road, a couple of other modifications have had come to our minds while traveling. So we found that we were having to be inside the van more than we had anticipated <laughs> due to bad weather 
or um, you know just trying to get some privacy yeah we did hey <laughs> and then even like stealth sleeping in streets so yeah we couldn't really sprawl out so to combat this we ordered a swivel seat bracket for our passenger seat to give us some more usable floor space in the front and to add an extra seat when we're going to eat inside the van it really made things a bit easier once we got that So after the first couple of weeks, we decided that being inside was a bit too cramped. So one thing we decided that was a must that we had to change was our front seat to this captain's chair. And you know, is there a spot? Uh, we can't even adjust it. And you can slide it back or forward. It just really opens up our space here. And then it gives good, great access to the fridge from that chair. You can easily sit in there and access that fridge. It just really opened up the space for us yeah. inside the van. Like now we can comfortably sit here. I can sit on the end of the bed. Martha can sit there and we can have dinner or she can sit there, use the computer or whatever. Like it's just really made everything just so much easier for us. Like it's just opened up our space here. And like, I think it was definitely a must like it would be a lot harder on the road without it, don't you agree? And there you have it. So another thing that had been slowly killing me throughout the trip was our water situation. So we just had like a 20 litre water container under our fridge at the start. And basically every time we wanted to fill up a water bottle or fill that up, had to drag it out from the fridge, put it on the side of the van, to fill up the bottles and put it back. This was just really doing my head in Annoying. every day. <laughs> so what we did, we ended up ordering a water pump from Kickass. It six liters a minute pump, like just a small pump. So we ended up setting that up at a very low cost. So we now have running water inside the van. It worked out really well because we didn't have much space left because considering this was the last thing we've done. Um, but yeah, we made it work. So now we've got running water inside the van using the space that we had left. And then this is our water pump. This is something that we really, really struggled before we had it. We're really glad that we installed it. It was very easy to do. So I just ran, these are the cables that come hardwired in. So I just put in a little terminal strip here. So I've got coming straight off the battery onto the terminal strip. I've put a fuse on there to protect it. And then the switch wires I've ran up here with the water hose. They run up to this this box here so i can turn that on and off you can hear the pump so it's a pressurized pump so i've got the switch on now we just turn on the tap here it'll pump fill up your bottle and then it'll turn off with the close of the valve so running in the hoses for the water pump was very easy i just drilled a hole straight through there and that hose runs into our tank straight onto here so this is our water pump down here it's actually just underneath the fridge. It's a 23 litre tank. We can upgrade to a bigger tank. We've got the room for it. So all I've done is I've drilled a hole to the side, brought our hose in, drilled a hole in the top of the tank here to bring a hose in. I put a couple of fixings in the corners and a bungee strap to hold it in place. We haven't had it go on us or move or anything. It's worked out really well. So I think the whole water pump install is probably around $100 with buying the pump and the hoses and the tanks. So it's worked out really cheap. We're very happy with it. Once we got all the work done, we wasted no time and we started again our trip. Our plan was just drive to the south and just hoping that we have a little bit of the Victorian summer. 